Have you ever had someone pray for you? Yeah. Isn't it encouraging to know that someone cares enough to pray for you and on your behalf? And I can still remember my nana who would kneel beside her bed late at night, faithfully praying for her family and her loved ones. And knowing my nana and the way that she loved the Lord and she loved people and her family, her prayers would have been filled with love, faith and hope for the future. And even though she's in heaven now, God heard her prayers. And the Holy Spirit continues to do a work. Those prayers didn't die when she did. Through her faithfulness, God's story continues to unfold. And you may have a similar story of someone that has loved and prayed for you over the years. Maybe a prayer pal or a family member or a friend. And I'm sure that many of you are praying for people now, people that you've been laid on your heart, praying earnestly for God to intervene and be at work in the lives of those you love. And much like my Nana's prayer and the prayers of those that have gone before us, today we're going to explore Paul's powerful prayer for the church in Ephesians 1 and learn how we can experience its transforming power over our own lives. Now this is week two in our Ephesians series and sadly I went straight after Sean last week and I've just heard it's the best sermon that anyone's ever heard. (laughs) So no pressure here at all. But as we move through this book, we will begin to notice that in the first part of Ephesians, Paul is exploring the story of the gospel of Jesus. How we have been adopted into God's family and how Jesus' death covers our worst sins and failures. And through Jesus, we find God's grace and forgiveness. And then as we move into the coming weeks, we will start to notice a shift as Paul reminds us how we should live because of Jesus. And as I read through this prayer, there is so much to explore. And I know many of you are coming on this journey and reading along and reading this for yourself. So you will know that this prayer is flooded with so much about who God is and Paul has a lot to say about living in the fullness of Christ. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to look over this prayer for yourself this week and ask God what he wants to show you. But for today, I'm going to just share three things that God is teaching me and I invite you right now to open up your Bibles or your Bible app to Ephesians. So chapter 1, 15 to 23. And we're going to start in verse 17. And Paul's prayer in this verse is that we will receive the spirit of wisdom to know God intimately. And in another version it says, grow in your knowledge of God. Now, wisdom can come with age. Although I've met some people of age that lack wisdom. (laughs) And I've also experienced younger people who have wisdom beyond their years. Spiritual wisdom is more than just knowledge and experience. And as Paul grew in wisdom during his time in prison, facing trials and challenges, we also can grow in wisdom through our own experiences. And I'm not sure about you, but I tend to try and pray away the tough stuff because that stuff stinks, doesn't it? But often these are the things that draw us closer to God. As we face challenges, we can either blame God and get so frustrated as to why it's happening, or like Paul's prayer, we can grow in wisdom and use that to know God more intimately. Now, some of you may know Cherie Clanfield, who used to be part of our church family here, and now she lives in Brisbane. And I asked permission if I could share a bit of a story. 
Now, earlier this year, Cherie had a terrible accident at work and a client um, attacked her and hit her in the eye. And not just once, but several times. And this resulted in her needing emergency surgeries to save the vision in her right eye. Now, that was in March this year, and she still can't see out of that eye very well. And as you can imagine, this has been such a traumatic journey. She's surrounded in prayer, and the journey continues. But when I caught up with Cherie a few weeks ago, she shared more of the journey with me. And the current status being only partial vision in that eye. But what stood out to me was when she shared how if she could, she wouldn't take that whole experience back. She is, in fact, grateful for it because it has made her, her faith deeper and her love for God stronger. She has used this horrendous experience and grown in spiritual wisdom. She could have so easily let it drawn her away from God and retreated into herself. But in a wisdom that could only have come from God, she now has a more intimate relationship with him. Paul's prayer is that we will have wisdom to use whatever is going on to use it to know God more, to understand his character, his ways, and his heart for us and the world. And what are you facing in your life right now, and how can you seek wisdom from God in dealing with these challenges? And just as Paul prayed for us to grow in wisdom and knowledge of God, how can your current experiences draw you close closer to understanding more of who he is. Then we look at verse 18, and Paul's prayer is that our hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given us. It's not just about knowing what God has done, because as Christians, we know that Jesus died for us so that we can be free. But Paul's prayer here is more than that. His prayer is that we understand without a doubt the hope we can have through Jesus. The light giving more clarity and understanding to experience the full revelation of hope. Hope for our future in Christ. Hope being a firm assurance about the things that may at present seem unclear or unknown. Imagine that you are standing in a dark room, surrounded by thick curtains that block out all the light. In this darkness, you can feel the presence of objects, but you cannot see them clearly. You know that there's things around you, but the lack of light hinders your understanding of what they are exactly. And in this analogy, the dark room represents our hearts before we fully comprehend the hope we have in Christ. We might be aware of the basic knowledge that Jesus died for our sins and that we are forgiven, but there can still be a sense of uncertainty and confusion about the future and the promises God has made for us. Now picture someone slowly drawing back the curtains, allowing light to flood the room. As the light spreads, the darkness disappears, and you can now see the objects around you with such clarity. The room becomes illuminated, and you begin to understand the layout, the colours, the details of everything present. The light represents the revelation of hope that Paul prays for, and as you begin to understand the confident hope in Jesus. 
like the light that reveals objects in a room of uncertainty and unknown, like when our present circumstances seem unclear, this light brings complete clarity and understanding about our future and hope in Jesus. This is when we will experience hope, a security and confidence as we trust in God. This prayer is not just knowing the facts and basics about Jesus' sacrifice, but understanding to walk confidently in our relationship with God. In a world filled with uncertainty, we need more light. And it needs to begin in our own heart. Understanding this hope empowers us to face challenges with courage and confidence. In what areas of your life can you intentionally invite Christ to shine his light so that you can experience a deeper understanding of hope through Jesus? Then in verses 19 and 20, Paul prays that we will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead and is made available to us through faith in Jesus. Now, my understanding is that this is no mobile phone battery here that after a few hours goes dead and you need to recharge it. We are talking about a power that raised Jesus from the dead and that put him on a throne in heaven in charge of running the universe. Everything from galaxies to governments. No name and no power is exempt from his rule. And not just for a short time, <clears throat> but forever. This prayer is that we will continually experience the greatness of God's power. And what does this mean for us? And how can we experience the reality of God, God's power in our personal lives? Well, I believe that this, this verse comes hand in hand with the verses before it. When we experience God's wisdom to know him more, and as the light exposes a deeper understanding of hope we have in Christ, then we will experience the power of the Holy Spirit as he directs and leads us. As we no longer do things in our own strength, we begin to surrender and allow God to be at work. God's power is not distant and 3,000 years old. It is living, it is current, it is active, and it transforms lives. The Holy Spirit's power lives in us and is made available to you through faith. It empowers us to live victorious lives, breaking the chains of sin and the world for God. This is a power that when everything feels hopeless, when you think that things will never change, this is where God can do a mighty work. In what area do you need God's power to make a difference? And where do you need the Holy Spirit's power to be at work in your life and those you love? Paul's prayer for us is alive and active. It is a prayer for us to live out every day. We can experience this prayer for ourselves and others in our lives. Whatever is going on, this prayer is that with wisdom, God will reveal more of who he is. Then as we know him more, the light will expose the hope we have in Jesus. And as we experience God's incredible power, and as I remembered my nana on her knees, sometimes we just need to get to a place of complete surrender. 
the times when I felt so desperate, I get on my knees and I say to God, how about I get out of the way and you can do your thing? But perhaps before the desperation stage, I should have surrendered much earlier. And prayer can happen in any position. You can be in the car. You can just be sitting in your seat. But there is something about the posture, about being on your knees. And I've found that it is more focused and intense. And as we bow down, we give God the authority and allow his power to be at work. And as we listen to this song, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and claim that wisdom, hope and power over your own life and those around you. I invite you to be in a posture of surrender, to either kneel at your seat or down here at the mercy seat, giving God the authority. And my prayer is that today God reveals more of himself to each of us, that Paul's prayer for us, the church, resonates in our hearts, it transforms lives, and that God will be glorified.